When I was a teenager, I told my parents to sell the cottage. It was too tame a me. I was all about water crashing against rocks and wind howling in from the Atlantic, not lilacs and bluebirds, blueberry fields and pretty cottages. I couldn't understand why they had chosen this dull beauty. It wasn't even the ocean, just a spit of land jutting into the mouth of a river. At 14, I wanted action. They sought refuge. At 15, I wanted drama. They sought peace. At 16, I left for France. They stayed behind. I swallowed my wounds. You smoothed out the land. Thirty years later, I finally get it. This is one of those rare places. A place not about drama. Don't get me wrong, this place has seen plenty. It is a holder of stories, true stories, only a fraction of which I know. Full of intrigue and the sweep of history and a cast of characters to die for. Nowhere to go. Of course, the place has been pretty quiet for the last 140 years. Now, as chainsaws take down the trees and bulldozers scrape the field, I see how wrong I had it. So, it is not one of those pristine wild places where the air knocks sense into you. So it has a pretty interesting history. The stories I would tell now are the small ones, about the many years of practicing the rituals of the place, as family, together and alone. I will no longer come here once the balance tips to the modern noisy drama of tinkling glasses and party bands, of people who fall in love with the place for a couple of hours. The stories will fall away, for no one will pitch a tent on the bluff's edge or lay blankets under a sky bursting with meteor showers or swing to the edges of the world.